Tuloy po natin yung point number two that we are going to talk about. So, let's say na-receive mo na si Jesus as Lord and Savior. And yet, you continue to sin because you are separated from God. So, i-position po natin na maayos. Ha? So, sin is the reason why we are separated from God. The reason why we sin, we will talk about that in a few moments. So, James chapter 1, sabi po rito, sabi rito, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because... Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Sabi po dyan sa verse 14, amplified version, but each one is tempted when he is dragged away, enticed, and baited to commit sin. By what? By his own worldly desire, lust, passion. And may the Lord add revelation to the reading of his mighty, mighty word. So huwag natin kakalimutan that you know, the Lord has given us all the faculties to live a righteous sin-free life. Yes! When we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we became a new creation. Diba? Behold, the new has come. The old is gone. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So what happens when we sin? We sin because tayo ay tempted by our own lustful, passionate desires. Yun yung gusto natin tignan. For instance, if you are a man, and if you like, you know, sa anatomy ng babae, let's say you like yung kanyang breast. And then you look at the breast. And then eventually you find yourself thinking lustfully about this person because the initial temptation was created dahil you lust for, you know, that type of body part sa isang tao. And you looked at that body part and then nag-progress yung iyong kasalanan. So it does not stop there. If you do not allow, if you allow the sin to continue, hindi lang mag end yun sa tinig. Nang mo yung breast ng babae, you had lustful thoughts, maya maya, you will find yourself, you know, doing pornography, you will find yourself, you know, masturbating, you might find yourself eventually, uh, you know, playing pornographic games, reading pornographic materials, and worst of all, even if you are a believer, you, kung meron kang girlfriend, pipilitin mo siyang mag-fornicate. At dahil sa you have been orientated by this type of lustful, passionate, sinful, you know, stimuli, yung bombardment nito, yung, yung in-educate ka na this is what is, you know, sex is, and this is how pleasurable sex, sex is. So, you will implement what you have learned from this materials, which might not be or might be the true doon sa iyong girlfriend, then you will fornicate and lead that girlfriend to sin. And that's how sin destroys us. That's how a Christian in bondage behaves. Ang isang Christian na makasalanan, maghahanap yan ng mga, uh, mga iba pang Kristiyano na makakasama niya sa kasalanan niya. Yan po ang kalakaran ng kasalanan. Ang isang tao nagkakasala, they will never sin alone. Kaya nga po kung kayo ay right now, if you're listening in right now, you are a Christian couple, romantically linked together, hindi pa kayo nagiging married, and then the, whoever is the aggressor, whether yung babae or yung lalaki, one of you tempts each other to fornicate, then you know you are committing a sin, and that is because that is your desire. You want to fornicate with your partner, regardless of the result of that. Paring mabundis, uh, maaring magkaroon ng uh, kung anumang ano, uh, uh, impact on the relationship, uh, whether in present, in the future, I don't know. Diba? So that is something that is happening to a Christian in bondage. What will it lead to? It will lead to death. Yan, sinasabi dyan. So marami kasing pinapatay ang kasalanan. Nakakala kasi natin ang kasalanan, it will perpetually give us joy. Of course not. Sin is designed to give you immediate pleasure but it gives you a lifetime of dissatisfaction. And one of the things that sin, you know, continuous sin does, pinapatay niya yung joy natin. Pinapatay niya yung simplicity 
ng joy ng isang individual. Kaya kung ano-ano ang ginagawa ng isang kristyanong makasalanan o kristyanong in bondage, bili dito, bili doon, kain dito, kain doon, hindi siya generous sa kanyang kapwa, kristyano, hindi siya generous sa Panginoon sa pagbibigay ng kanyang kayamanan, ng talento niya, ng kanyang pag-iisip, ng kanyang panahon. So, ang isang kristyano who is in bondage, separated from God because of sin, continuously becomes enslaved in sin. Deeper and deeper. So, tuloy-tuloy yung kasalanan niya. Kahit pagsabihan mo, hindi pa rin niya maintindihan yung katotohanan ng sinasabi mo, pinaniniwalaan pa rin niya yung kasinungalingan na nakaging o naagis na niya na. Okay? Tuloy natin. So, Romans 6, 15 to 18, whenever appropriately stand with me, when we read the Bible, sabi dito, Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, that does that mean we go on sinning? Of course not! Again, Paul was talking to the Church of uh, Rome and he was, you know, having this conversation with them. You know, the, the Roman Christians believe that they are saved, so I, I'm... I am saved. So, ibig sabihin mo, I can continuously sin because regardless of my actions, I will still go to heaven because my salvation is confirmed by the decree of receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. Sabi ni Paul, no! No! Sabi John 16, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin which leads to death or you can choose to obey God which leads to righteous living. So, if you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, kung wala ka ng panlasa sa kasalanan, you will avoid as much as you can like the plague, magkasala. Because you have been given a different mindset. You have been, you know, moved from a journey towards sin and obedience to Satan towards a journey towards, you know, righteousness and obedience to God. So, ang galing. Ang galing ng transformation. Sabi dyan, verse 17, Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin. And you have become slaves to righteous living. And may the Lord add wisdom and grace to obey His word. Grabe. Grabe talaga ang Panginoon. Nakakakilig. Isipin. So let's continue on discussing. So a Christian in bondage goes on sinning even after they have received Christ as Lord and Savior. But ito yung importanteng tanong. Kung naniniwala ka talaga na natanggap mo na si Jesus bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas, magkakasala ka pa rin ba? So one of the clear manifestations of true salvation is you begin to live righteously. Because you become a slave, quote and unquote, to righteousness. Ginamit ng ni Paul ang concept ng slavery because the Roman Christians understood what slavery meant because they were slaves in their trade during that time. So, sinasabi dito ni Apostle Paul para clear na clear ang kanyang analogy of slavery. If you sin, you are a slave to sin, therefore, you are obeying Satan. When you declare that you are a believer, you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are a child of God, Ibig sabihin, you are a slave to righteousness. Therefore, you can do, do no sin. You don't want to sin. You hate sin. You hate sin. Iiwasan mo magkasala. Iiwasan mo na hindi magpray. Because you know prayer is the right thing to do on a daily basis dahil yun ang commandment na Panginoon. So that is living in righteousness. And when you live in righteousness, yung utak mo nagbabago, ang naman na utak mo is everything that is right. Not, you know, it, it does not contain the lies and deceptions of the devil. So what happens is you continuously live according to the will of God. So, sin deprives us of correct living. So in other words, dahil ka magkamali. Mali yung pinipili mo ng kaibigan, mali yung pinili mong course, mali yung pinili mong asawa, mali yung pinili mong profession, mali yung mga desisyon na ginagawa mo. Sa mga kresyano rito, hindi masamang tumulong sa pamilya. Hindi talaga masama kung yun ay kagustuhan ng Panginoon. Pero kung ikaw ay tumutulong sa pamilya na ikaw na ang nag act as God, then that is absolutely wrong. Why? Because you need to go through asking God, Lord, it is, is it appropriate 
to allow my family to be in this situation before I help them, diba? Because you have to get clearance from God. If you are going to look at the Bible, there are a lot of things that God allowed so that sin may surface, so that sin will be exposed. Para yung taong nagkakasala, dahil hindi siya sinalban ng kamag-anak niya, ng anak niya, ng tatay niya, ng magulang niya, will realize the sinfulness that they are committing. So if you negate that, Ka. They will forget that there is a God that they should humble themselves before so that they may receive yung grace of wisdom to make the right decisions and to be dependent on God that may lead to salvation kung di pa nila natatanggap si Jesus as Lord and Savior. Do not become the God of those people because they will not ask God anymore. They will ask you. Dahil na andun ka. So if you become amateur providence to God, then I am telling you, you are living in disobedience and you are a slave to sin because you believe something contrary to the Bible and you live it out to be right. And when you live something that is absolutely against God's will and you think that it is correct, then you are absolutely wrong. Because ang tao na righteous will always obey God. Hindi niya ipe-perpetuate ang kasalanan sa pamilya. Iko-call out niya ang kasalanan sa pamilya. Iko-call out niya yung need to be dependent on God. Sasabihin niya what is scripturally appropriate even if it means he or she will be judged. But because Jesus was hated by the world, bakit ba natin gusto tayo, bakit ba gusto ng krisyanong mahalin tayo ng mundo? If Jesus said, Behold, you know, the, you know, the world will hate you because it hated me first. So, bakit mo ba rin insist that the world loves you if contrary to the scriptures ang ginagawa mo? Therefore, you are in bondage. Kahit tingin mo mabuti ang ginagawa mo, hindi siya mabuti sa mata ng Panginoon. Sa mata mo, maaari. That ayaw mong ma- ma- mapulaan ka, ayaw mong ma-judge ka, ayaw mong masabi na mga tao na ganito, ganyan ka. Pero nakakalimutan mo, ano na sabihin ng Panginoon sa'yo? So you live in bondage even if you think you are doing something about para nag Para nag-ministry ka. Why, why do you minister? Why do you minister? Why do you come to the Lord in prayer? Pag mali ang motive natin, then we know that we are in bondage because we are doing something not out of love. We are doing something out of greed because we want something in return. And ang daming pinapatay ng kasalanan and one of the things that sin destroys and kills is the truth. 